Welcome to The Spread. I'm Matt Rabel. Credit Suisse Group AG has been slapped by a lawsuit from a group of investors led by Set Capital LLC, alleging that investors lost $1.8 billion when Credit Suisse manipulated the value of XIV notes, which increase in value when the market is calm and the VIX is low. A federal judge dismissed the case in September 2019 after ruling that Set Capital had failed to plausibly claim that the defendants were intentionally trying to manipulate the market. But a New York federal appeals court revived it on April 27th, claiming that there were misstatements in the offering documents. I haven't heard this much he said, she said since season one of Love is Blind. Ugh. Anyway, let's talk about some good things that are happening. There's probably enough negative stories in your Twitter feed these days. ABR Dynamic Funds LLC, which is a New York-based mutual fund, has netted $540 million thanks to a bunch of momentum trades. In August 2020, ABR launched what it calls its 7525 Volatility Fund, which is a mixture of long and short volatility strategies involving the trading of securities like S&P E-mini futures, VIX futures, and ETPs and derivatives tied to the VIX and the S&P. When the pandemic crash triggered bullish sentiment for ETFs and indexes tied to market volatility, ABR's chickens came home to roost and the firm netted over half a billion dollars. Not too shabby. Our sponsor, the OCC, won Best Place for Working Parents in Dallas, Texas, by a community-driven campaign called Best Place for Kids, an honor given in recognition for family-friendly business practices. The OCC touted its commitment to diversity and inclusion as a major factor. Good to see the company still takes care of its own, even while clearing record numbers of options contracts. The OCC also posthumously awarded the Joseph W. Sullivan Options Industry Achievement Award to Joe Levin, the former SIBO Vice President of Research and Product Development who led the development of the VIX, along with Robert Whaley, who was then a Duke University professor. John Lothian covered this in an article published last week at OIC. Besides John, the rest of JLN staff, including myself, covered OIC last week as well. Here are some key takeaways. One, volume for options trading has been higher than usual over the past few years. No big surprise there. Starting with Volmageddon in 2018, it rose further amid high levels of volatility during the pandemic last year and has continued all the way up to this year's Q1 record-setting volumes. Two, a lot of the growth is coming from the huge increase in retail traders who tend to prefer single stock investing with mobile apps over investing in ETPs. Three, as reported by JLN editor Suzanne Cosgrove from the show, SEC Commissioner Allison Heron Lee said in an interview with OCC's CEO John Davidson that last year proved that the markets are surprisingly resilient and can be run virtually, though some changes might be needed, like shortening the settlement cycle of some U.S. equities trades. Be sure to check out johnlothianews.com for our coverage of OIC, not to mention a new episode of the Crypto Markets Wiki podcast and a new article on hemp farming and the market for carbon credits by Tom Thompson. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn for updates on news and new content. That's it for the spread this week. Stay safe and happy trading. Mm -hmm.